Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. You know, it's your best friend, Joe Jaguar, City Smartphone Astronomy. Oh, I forgot to tighten our things for the trumus. Okay, uh, I'll go inside and get it. So, for you guys that don't know, and not on the members, I am now at my new site, which is a Bordeaux 4. Uh, I guess I'll give you a quick update, but I, I think at least two months ago, I told the members this information so they knew I was moving my dark zone location from a Bordeaux 2 to a Bordeaux 4. I'll just go over it just for one minute. The Bordeaux 2 was much darker, two zones darker than this one, but it was 45 minutes further north than this place. That one, if I wanted to go to town, and I'm talking about the closest small town, I think a population 4,000, that was a 35 minute highway drive, just for simple stuff. So this new Bordeaux Zone 4, of course it's 45 minutes closer, two zones less, but the town is only like eight minutes away uh, drive, so much closer for amenities. It, of course, being closer and not as isolated, I do have a lot of neighbors. As you see, uh, there's one neighbor there. I mean, it's not super bright. Uh, there's the neighbor right across the street, has a light. Uh, then that tree, I don't know, they got a light on the tree. And then we have, so there's neighbors all around. It is a very nice area though. And I have deeded access to the lake, which is only a 30 second walk where the other property as well, I had to drive about three, four minutes away, or it was about a 20 minute walk. So this one is a, you know, 30 second walk. And I have deeded access, which means, I, you know, I have legal rights to the lake with a dock, uh, with another, you know, several people. So it's best of both worlds. It is a dead end road. We have not a waterfront lot, on the back lot, meaning on the second row from the water. You can see cars go by. Um, so I think there's only, on this street, uh, maybe 24 uh, cottages and some are homes uh, that people live year round. But anyway, so now it's a Bordeaux 4. So I could see the Milky Way. It's not as dark as the Bordeaux 2, of course, but you can still see the Milky Way. Still pretty good. Now, I also don't have a 360 view like I had in the other one. Um, I have a pretty good view. I'm hoping... I don't know. I noticed yesterday some of the neighbors uh, would turned off their lights at about midnight. Now it's only about, I don't know, 9, 9, 11. So anyway, what I want to do today is I want to look at some of the stuff I've already showed you guys in the last few months. And I want to see how much more, okay, because we use the 12 inch, how much dimmer is two zones less going to be um, with some of that stuff and let's go over it and I'll let you know I think for the most part most people maybe I don't know what percentage but I think most people when they get to a dark site they're probably going around you know Bortle zone 5 or 4 for their dark site uh, here it's an hour 45 minutes from my home where the Bortle 2 is two and a half hours and that adds up every like when you go every weekend uh, time, distance, and gas money is gets to, you know. But this is a more upscale neighborhood. Uh, it's much closer to the city, much closer to the town for amenities. And a lot of people here are my age in their 50s and 60s, and they live year round. Not everybody, but looks like about half of the people. It's more of a community. Where there, I was more isolated neighbors, but they were kind of far away. So let's get to it. Let's take a look at some of the stuff and I will tell you uh, how much darker I think it is. Now the Milky Way is still in a good zone. So is the Summer Triangle because it's so high up. So let's take a look and we'll come back. Let me set this up and let me, I forgot one more piece for the telescope. So the first, let me turn off the ride gel. Make sure it's off. The first item we're looking at uh, is the wild duck cluster and as you can see it's kind of like halfway up not the best object to be looking at more in the summer but it's easily seen in a 32 millimeter palazzo super palazzo very easy and because i guess it's one of the great items 
um, is fairly bright and fairly easy in a 12 inch. So let's go to something else. Let's try the Hercules cluster is actually too low. I could probably, if I go another 40 feet beyond this tree, um, yeah, I, actually another 20 feet, I could probably see it, but I'm just kind of testing on some of this stuff. The coat hanger was very easy, but even with a 56 millimeter eyepiece, I still can't fit it in the field of view, like just fits. So it's not really the greatest because you can't see sometimes that it fits too close. But anyway, what about, let's try the dumbbell cluster. So as you can see this one, the dumbbell nebula is much higher up in the sky. So it would be definitely still good to look at. So let's see how this looks. You know, the, remember too, this flash, I'm using the flash so you can see me. I do have a few lights, but easily seen without a nebula filter. And that's with a 32 millimeter. So easily seen. I can't remember, maybe it was brighter in the zone two, but in the zone four, I think most people would be happy with it as well. So let's try uh, the ring nebula. Okay, the ring nebula is a little bit lower, but still at a decent height. So let's see. Oh, this cam the camera light is actually shining right almost down the tube. I got to turn it off. The ring nebula was actually easy, even with the 32 millimeter Palazzo. You could see it very clearly, distinct. It was small, but normally uh, a lot of people have to zoom in uh, to see it because it's so tiny, it looks stellular or like a star until you bump up the power. So, okay, so Andromeda Galaxy is actually fairly high, um, maybe 70 degrees up, uh, not quite at the full zenith, you know, but, you know, it's pretty high. So as you can see by the telescope, how high I am right there. And let's check out the greatest galaxy in the Northern Hemisphere. So let me see how it looks. Oh, actually. Wow. I'm actually surprised, actually because, you know, I've seen it about a month and a half ago or two months ago, but of course I was up really late and it was much lower in the sky, like, you know, 25, 30 degrees. And now it's probably a good 65, 70 degrees. And you can clearly see the galaxy. Uh, you know, you can see the two companions. It's not so close. So even with a 32, which sounds kind of low power, I have to go like, I have to pan a little bit south to see the lower galaxy. And you could just see the top one, you know, just at the top. So a lot of times, you know, people think the Andromeda or the two companions are right beside, but you gotta remember most people that's taking pictures, um, they're doing a very, very low power to get the full frame. So if you're doing really low power, then it will be closer. But even at this power, you know, I have to pan a little bit to see these uh, lower galaxy. So I'm going to lower power and put a 56 millimeter eyepiece and take a look at it. But, you know what, to tell you the truth, I can see more extension, but the view is actually not as nice as the 32 millimeter. So somehow I'm seeing a little bit of the reflected light. Um, the 32, I think, was actually better even though I don't see the full extension of Andromeda. So it seems to me, you know, going, I was kind of worried going from a zone, you know, two to a zone four. You know, I've been thinking about it a hundred times. Am I going to like it? Is it going to bother me? Am I going to miss it? So I've been thinking about this a lot since... I moved from the other place. But uh, so far, you know, some of these better, of course, the Messier objects, uh, you know, the Milky Way, some of these things I just showed right now still look pretty decent. I think where I might, uh, you know, miss it 
is probably when I'm looking for the very dim stuff. Like remember a few videos ago, we looked at NGC 7331. So I think when looking at those very dim stuff, that two zone difference is gonna make a difference. Plus some of the neighbor lights is gonna make a difference. But I guess overall, you know, it's still dark. Uh, you know, I'm saving time, distance on, on my travel. Uh, and being 15 years in a uh, zone two, that two and a half hours every weekend was, and that's one way, was kind of getting to me. And as I'm getting older, kind of felt like I need to get a little closer, make it more convenient. So I think after just looking at a few things today, it's not too bad. Now, mind you, if one day, I can, a view from the back where there won't be any street lights, then I think would be even better. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. Just wanted to give you guys a little taste of a few items, the difference between a zone two, zone four. I've already mentioned it on the channel to the members a few months ago. They got the first view. You guys are now hearing about it. So that's why I moved uh, from a zone two to zone four to get closer closer to a town, uh, closer to my home in uh, Toronto or the city, and uh, if I need groceries or whatever. So if I do decide uh, to retire, let's say by the end of next year here, it's closer for me to travel from the city, it's closer to the town. Um, I'm around more neighbors that live year round here. And uh, I think the weather could be a little bit better also the lake i have lake access which is a 30 second walk instead of a four minute drive so that definitely i think some of the friends when we bring up are gonna like um and uh, i guess that's it there has to be compromises somewhere you know and uh, i think i feel a little bit better knowing that the even though it's two zones worse it's not the end of the world and i was very worried about that for you know mentioned to Angelus a hundred times like, oh, I hope I didn't make a mistake. I hope it's like the viewing's not gonna be too bad, but so far it's okay. So, you know, I just gotta live with it, you know? And uh, that's it. Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys on the next video. If you guys are getting into the channel, you know, please subscribe. Uh, if you're on the forums, maybe share my channel if you don't mind. And I do have members video where once a month they do get sometimes specialty news for them. They see videos that doesn't go in the public. And I think in the future, what I am going to do is, uh, of course, I explain to you guys on most videos what I see in the eyepiece. But in the members video, uh, maybe in the future is where I'm going to actually show them on camera what I'm seeing. And on the regular channel, just I'm just going to describe what I'm seeing. So why don't you join the members and I, why not you, why not me?